I feel like childbirth changes you. Like hmm. after my children were born, you feel like a superwoman. In progress. Here we are. <laughs> we did it. We met together. Although it was yeah. supposed to be on Thursday. Yeah, I messed this up. I'm not, I'm still trying to figure out if it was my brain or the um autocorrect who, who messed it up <laughs> i think it was it was for sure autocorrect <laughs> it wasn't your brain oh, no. at all let's face it it was my brain but <laughs> <laughs> quite possible whatever jamie <laughs> I, i i have no idea when we last met it's quite some time um has it been a decade i feel like it's been a decade Yeah, I think it was, you were still in Frankfurt when we last met, I think. Okay, so we were in Frankfurt. We've been here for like, well, we got married 2015. So 2016, we yeah. moved here. Oh, wow. So that, it's been that that's, long, six, at least six years. Wow. I mean, we saw each other for sure on the wedding. We know that. Yeah. So that was in 2015. So it's, okay. it's that been, may be the last time. That may be the last time. I know you might have like dropped into the box at some point in between there. Because weren't you already moved? Yeah, I think I've moved to Bielefeld in 2014. Yeah, okay, I'm not really. I'm not really sure. It's been a <laughs> long time too. Yeah, but I. <laughs> but I always remember the first time when we met because it's when i look back at it it changed my life pretty significantly really and i you can tell me yeah. the story with it i don't know which year it was it's it's really long time but i was um taking pictures for the um for the city magazine the sensor in wiesbaden at that time yeah, and um The guy was like, so, oh, Tim, yeah, this, this uh, month we have a, a title story about new fitness trends and sports in, I don't know which year it was. And I was like, oh, yeah, cool. Okay. And I had like five assignments. I think it was Graf Maga, water yoga, water, no, yoga. Wa water, water Zumba. That was Ooh. really amazing. And CrossFit. <laughs> And I had no idea what CrossFit or the other was. And then, and then I, I went there and I was like blown away. Like CrossFit Wiesbaden at that Is time that it was, was like... We CrossFit Wiesbaden and it was there. Yes. Okay. Yes. At the, um, at the train station in this, I don't know what to say. So that was easily 2000, 2011 or 2012. Yeah, I think 12 or 13 or 2012, something like that. 2013, yeah. Yeah, and it was pretty basic. Like it was like a, a container, no heating, but really yeah. this. Was it, this was first it the impression. one that was at the train station? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. just like the old hall, bare yes. minimum. It was Stephen Glover was the the owner back then. Exactly. Yeah. And um, you and Phil, you were coaches there, and I was like, oh, this this is interesting. When I took the pictures and. I talked to Steven and he was like, yeah, come on, come by, try it out. Come and on, I went baby. and I went. And since then I was on a bandwagon <laughs> I mean, and I never looked back since then. Yeah. You drink and you were it's over. Exactly. And you were my um, instructor back then. Amazing. I mean, I vividly remember you, Tim, but I don't remember yeah. that exact <laughs> like moment at which we, we met though. <laughs> But I that remember cool. that box. Oh my God, it was so cold in the winter. Yeah. Like we would yeah. coach like three hours in the evening and we would have to wear like three pairs of pants, three pairs of socks, like thick Ugg boots, a sweatshirt, <laughs> two jackets, two beanies and like ski gloves. And you're still like so frozen the entire time yeah. you're coaching. Yeah, I remember when he, when Stephen bought these, um, these heaters. On the, oh, yeah. on the roof but before that it was like freezing it was basically like the, there was no wall 
it was like a container and then you opened the door and it was like like this big <laughs> i'm not kidding you it was colder inside the building than it was outside yeah like yeah. how is this possible i'm gonna go outside in the winter and get warm to go coach on the inside <laughs> yeah. and i think like crossfit the most crossfit boxes i've been to in the last years they're notoriously like cold places in the winter <laughs> because sure. it's like big warehouses and yeah. uh, the heating isn't oh, like really, really working good. but but there's still no comparison whenever somebody is um complaining about the about the cold in the in the, in the places i'm like you have no idea you <laughs> have <Literally>. no idea <laughs> you come talk to me when you cannot feel your hands or your feet and yeah, then you we'll have talk. no idea <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yeah. That was, that was like hardcore CrossFit for sure. Yeah. But it was amazing. It was like really like, um, how do you say it? Really? Um, I mean, the environment was really basic. Like it was real. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, like you that. weren't coming for the fancy equipment. You weren't coming for, exactly. you know, the, the spa towel, you were coming to get your fitness on and hang out with cool people. Yeah. Like yeah. that's all you needed. That's really all you still need, but exactly. now it's getting upgraded on every level. I have a quote. I have a quote I read this morning. We can get rid of the need for movement in our environment, but we can't get rid of the need for movement in our bodies. Katie Bowman. Ooh. Really like that's that. That's so true. No, you can't, you cannot get rid of the movement that your body for like craves, you know, once you start the movement and you, and you know what it feels like when you stop, like anyone that's done any type of fitness program for X amount of time, when you stop, it's like your whole, whole world changes. For me, it was the same thing. Like when I had babies and had to take care of them, I was like, why is my mood so different? <laughs> Like, yeah, really, I really was not my usual self because I didn't get like my, my normal routine of like moving, whatever it, it is easy movement. I was just not moving at all. I was just sitting on the couch, like feeding a baby from my boob and putting the baby to sleep and then sleeping myself and then feeding the baby again. I'm like, yep, I gotta do something. <laughs> and did you do something? Did you like incorporate something? Yeah. So in the beginning, no. So I just like straight up easily for the first two months, really let my body recover because childbirth is crazy. <laughs> like what it does to the body yes. and like how long you built up to this delivery, you know, like nine months of your body changing. So like, I really gave myself a lot of grace. I was like, okay, just take some time off. Um, and I would go for walks and stuff like as the weeks went on, I could go on a longer and longer walk, but, um, I really took it easy, but I could tell when I, at, usually by the end of those two months, if I had not started to do something, I could tell my mood was really like, okay, I'm not, I need to get some, some good feeling back other than obviously being a mother and stuff. That's great. But I mean. The movement part is a really key aspect into my mood and how I'm feeling. And if I don't get that, not good. <laughs> like, yeah, why awesome. am I snapping to fill all the time? Oh, I haven't trained. <laughs> <in a week>. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> and did you? Like, uh, can you go train, please? <laughs> and did you do some training um, while you were pregnant? Oh yeah, yeah. So, well, what's really funny is. So Joey, the first baby, my older daughter, so weird to say that. Um, <laughs> you have like two now. Being, now I literally have two children. It's yeah. weird to even say that. And to like look at them in the flesh and be like, oh my God, those are they are real. <laughs> They're real. And I actually have to take care of them. Um, <laughs> like for us. <forever. laughs> um, 
no, with Joey, like being pregnant for the first time, you're like, oh, this is so amazing. You have all this energy. And so like, I just kept up my normal routine and was training and trained until probably two weeks before I gave birth. And then, yeah, like I felt so good. I don't know what it was. It was just, I just kept on doing it. I mean, of course, everything was scaled appropriately for my current state. Um, But once I had Joey, then about six months later, I really started to consistently train. And then it was only a few months later that I got pregnant. And I was like, okay, that pregnancy actually had a miscarriage, but it was like super early on. It wasn't like, it wasn't, there was no baby in there. It it was like a false pregnancy. But at that point I was like, oh man, I'm going to get pregnant again. Do I really want to like train hard now? (laughs) Do I really want to like, so you already had, so you already had um, planned in your head that it's going to happen again. So, and you thought like, oh, okay. Yeah. I already knew we wanted to have kids like And the fact that I had gotten pregnant so quickly, I was like, oh, shoot. Okay. We're probably going to like have another baby soon. Mm. So then it was like something switched in my brain where I was like, I don't need to train (laughs) that hard. (laughs) Oh, I should probably take it easy. So, cause I was not like back in the rhythm of things, you know, like it's hard when you haven't trained in a while and then going back to start training again, you're just like, Am I starting all over again or am I starting all yeah. over again? Yeah, it's and it's so a- frustrating, you know. So I know I can't imagine how it is like coming back from a pregnancy, but I had um, my booster vaccination like a week ago. And yeah. yesterday was the first day I got back to the gym. Oh, yeah, I saw that you were doing uh, push presses and push jerks. Yeah, and I had like, I had before that, I had snatches and um, back squats in my programming. Oh, cool. And back squats was like, uh, work up to 86%, not gonna happen. (laughs) Oh, no, oh my God. And I I missed like, I nailed two out of nine snatches in the last set from (sighs) from my programming. So I was like, way out of technique, and my strength was, was also like, 20% 20% below like from a week ago yeah. and I can't well, I can't imagine how it is like if you if you stop for like months okay yeah well let let me finish <laughs> this because I stopped then training really hard and just kind of taking it easy and then I got pregnant with James so I have a one-year-old who's not going to daycare I'm pregnant with nosh I'm nauseous I'm exhausted. So I basically almost the entire pregnancy of James did not train. No. Cause I was just like, it's so, and other moms know what's up. It's so hard having a small child. That's what, you know, around one that wants to like do stuff. She's not lazy. She's like, come on, mom, take me places, do things with me. Yeah. <laughs> and then you're pregnant and you're like sick you want to throw up and then the babies are pulling on you and you're just like, I hate being pregnant. (laughs) So by like month four, I was already like, I am so over being pregnant. Like the novelty of being pregnant is gone. I'm like, get this baby out of me. (laughs) So the novelty of getting (laughs) pregnant. Like women like look, I mean, the women that want to be pregnant, look forward to like having the baby bump and taking the picture every month and like all this stuff. And then the second time around, I was like, I didn't take barely any photos. <laughs> I like was just like slothing around everywhere I went. I'm like, this is so <laughs> And so I just started training again, like probably a month ago, I've been consistently training with, and James is almost nine months so it's been two plus two years probably that I've really like consistently trained so coming back is so humbling I cannot describe to you (laughs) 
because I remember myself and my strength and all the things that I could do. And now it's like, it's just gone. I'm basically, st- I feel like I'm just starting over. So it's not exactly, right. not, not exactly. I saw you in your, in your story. I saw your handstand walking <laughs> yesterday. So, okay. That was a shocker. I was <laughs> shocked. I had maybe gone inverted one time in the last two years. So I yeah. did not think that was going to happen. So no, you're right. I'm not starting from the beginning, but not, not from the beginning, beginning, but <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely taken a few steps back <laughs> yeah. and um, yeah, no, honestly, it, it's hard though. Like I totally have a lot more respect for women that have, had children and have started training again and have like really transformed themselves again because it is hard work. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> what is going on? Why is this beeping? Somebody's trying to rape me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And when you said the first time you said you had so much energy, is this, is this really a thing? This, um, is mom strengths like yeah. when you see for example like the stories of like any first daughter at the games last year or Kara Saunders they all like perform amazingly is this really a thing like I do you have more energy well I feel like childbirth changes you like hmm. after my children were born, you feel like a superwoman. You're like, oh my gosh, this baby that I was so afraid to shoot out my badge, like I did it. Like I did it, it doesn't matter how I did it, but I did it and I'm alive and the baby's alive. It's like the biggest adrenaline rush in your life. And it's so empowering as a woman to be like, I made this. I literally cooked it and I birthed it out of this small hole that I was like stressing about. (laughs) I'm not kidding. So I do think it, it changes you mentally. And maybe at that point for them, they believe in themselves even more than they believed in themselves before. I could see how that would, that would change. Makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I totally get it. <laughs> They're like, oh, I thought, I thought I could do this, but now I, I know I can like exceed it. Yeah, I can do much more than that. Yeah, actually. way more. Yeah, 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 for sure. It's the childbirth. It's the whole wow. process. That's You'll awesome. never know. Although I think that might be a fun thing that you should do. Is Don't they have those little electrodes that you can attach to like parts of your body to help you feel what it feels like to have a contraction really yeah. oh man <laughs> i can't remember oh there's it's online but there's these guys that did it and they were such little like weenie <laughs> like they couldn't <laughs> handle like the i want to feel what it's like yeah i don't think man. any man has ever said I want to feel what it's like, but yeah. they obviously did it as a joke. <laughs> but there it you you could maybe bring that out of you. You could act like you have childbirth, Tim, and then you might be able to achieve more things that you thought you could have could not have achieved. I haven't looked at it like in that perspective, like enhancing your your um, work capacity with trying to emulate a child girl. okay it's called variance tim you need to vary it up <laughs> this is better than steroids <laughs> way better you never would have thought most painful thing i've ever experienced but here i am <laughs> crazy so your yeah. your oldest daughter is like one year old now so that that means that you um older. gave birth so you gave birth during, during COVID, wasn't it? Well, so she was born in September of 2019. So right before ah, COVID. Okay. So she, by the time she was like six and a half months or so is when COVID started. So she's a oh, COVID right. baby for sure. 
and then James, obviously, that was last last year, yeah. um, or this year. Wait, yeah, last year. <laughs> what this year is old? only like one month old. <laughs> yeah, he's only. One. <laughs> so last year he was born, so he was born in the COVID time. So that was super interesting with the whole hospital thing. And yeah, how was that? Did you? Have, it, was Phil allowed to to get in or? So with with Joey, due to complications and stuff, he was not able to be there for her birth. And then with James, I was like so hard set on the fact that I wanted him to experience childbirth because no. he didn't get to experience that with Joey. And so I was like, I am going to hold on for as long as I can at, at home until we have to go to the hospital because the dads are not allowed, or at that time, we're not allowed into the, the birthing room until you were in active labor. So you had to have okay. dilated to a certain amount to like be at the point with, at which the baby's really going to come. And then yep. the dad can come into the room. So if okay. I were to have gone to the hospital, but I had five hours to go, oh, really? I, I was going to birth. I see the thought the baby, then he could yeah. not be there for support and stuff like that. All right. So I see anyway, the point. Yep. I was just like, I'm going to stay home for as long as possible. And of course, James decided from my first contraction to delivery to arrive in an hour and 45 minutes, which is extremely fast. Yeah. <laughs> I almost birthed him in the front of the hospital. <laughs> like, I'm not kidding you. I, I am not kidding you. I was walking to, from the elevator to the front of the Kaisal, Kaisal delivery area. Yeah. And I felt him drop. Oh, wow. And I was like, the baby's here. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy. And like, we got into the room and I was literally still wearing my jacket. Yep. And my socks when I delivered. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, did I just, is, is there a bait? Did I just deliver? What happened? Like, I was in shock. Is it over? <laughs> so he got to experience it. We didn't have to deal with any of the stupid COVID stuff. So it was that's worth cool. it, I guess. <clears throat> yeah, that's cool. So that's, so you can get in when it's at a certain point that's that's yeah. way better than not not being allowed to get in at all the only yeah. downside is usually in germany so in america you like deliver the baby and like hours later you leave the hospital because they're like trying to get you mm. out okay. but in germany it's it's normal to stay for three days mm. so during this three-day time period Usually you can have visitors, but during COVID you can't. So he oh. couldn't come to visit us after the birth. So he was there oh, for wow. the birth. He could be there with James and hold him. And then usually like a few hours after the birth, he had to leave. And then he couldn't see him again for a few days until we came home. Oh, wow. So that was the only downside to like the, the fact that I was staying in the hospital. Yeah. Um, But it's cool that he could experience the birth because like a few months ago, I had um, Eula on the podcast, which is a midwife mm -hmm. and CrossFit coach too. And she was like talking about is that basically the men are robbed of this maybe once in a lifetime experience and not being able to, to be at, in the in the place at that time so yes yeah. that's, that's crazy if you think about it like yeah like you don't know if you're gonna have more than one kid so that one yeah. time you're like okay i lost that opportunity yeah but for phil it was <laughs> such a funny experience because <laughs> he's like next to me and of course like i am really vocal with when i was having that of excruciating pain um and like the midwives were there and they were like, okay, we can see the head. We can see the head. The baby's coming now. It, the baby's coming now. And Phil's like thinking in his head, oh, they're just saying that, you know, like to encourage me, keep me going. 
And then he <laughs> looks down and he goes, the head is here. <laughs> the head has arrived. <laughs> they weren't lying. <laughs> oh, it's really there. <laughs> oh, it's really there. Oh my God, there's my son. Yeah. And then he, he got to cut the cord and he was like trying to cut the cord. And it, it's, I guess, really like hard, not hard, but like soft, hard. Like you mm. try to cut it and you're just like, these scissors are too dull. You can't cut it. So he like had to work hard to cut it, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> It was an like really squishy. Yeah. 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 It's just, I mean, <laughs> That's it's, awesome. Anyways. So yeah, he got to experience it. I was super happy. Yeah. It was, it was an amazing thing. And here we are two kids later, no kids after this, we're done with two. <laughs> so now, now it's over. I think so. I mean, right <laughs> now we have two small children. Yeah. Um, but really, once you have three, then you have to change your car. Then you're outnumbered. Like, mm, there's yeah. a lot of things to consider for the third one. And plus, we have a boy and a girl. So I feel complete. I feel like our family is complete. And I think Phil feels the same way because he's tired. He's like, <laughs> he's like can we do another one? That'd be possible. We always yeah, maybe, we maybe in a few years you will see. Honestly, I don't want to be an old mom. Yeah. How you old know, are you? Like, well, let's see here. I turned 35 this year hmm. in October. It's a good age for kids. Yeah. I Well, the thing is now I've had them and now it's done. And now I have like from 35 on to like live my life again. Yep. You know, I'm just like. I don't want to be pregnant again. <laughs> <laughs> was the pregnancy like, was it, was it this your, um, the greatest adversity to, uh, I don't know if you can say adversity, but was it like the biggest thing so far? Like physically or what do you mean? Like, was it the biggest struggle for me? I'm not struggle. I don't know. Like the, the thing you're, you're most proud of so far. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I, for sure. Having, having created a human, two humans, and birthing them out, for sure, goes down in the record books for me as being like the coolest <laughs> thing I think I've ever done. And I yeah. don't think anyone would really understand until they, as a woman, have done it to realize like how cool and magical it is as a female to like make some, make a human and bird them. Um, so yeah, no, definitely personally, my biggest achievement, of course. Yeah. I can't wait how these, how these little humans will turn out. I know. Well, and they're already so different. They're going to be crazy. They're like, Joey has my crazy. She has my crazy but she looks like phil's mom which is weird mm. and then <laughs> and then james has like people say he's like mini phil for the way he looks but he actually looks mm. the way i did when i was a little kid when i was a baby oh. but he has like a very soft mellow kind of personality and i guess that's how phil was when he was a baby you wouldn't expect that because phil is just as outgoing and crazy as I am <laughs> I guess I'm crazier I don't know how did uh, you I wonder how um how did you guys meet how was it <laughs> like like I, I have two questions like how did you how did you guys meet and I think the second question has something to do with it like how How did you end up in Germany and how did you end up in Germany coaching CrossFit in Wiesbaden? Yeah. Okay. So this is, I'll try to make it short. This story, <laughs> I'm going to start with question number two. So before I moved to Germany, I used to work for Abercrombie and Fitch. Oh yeah. So is I Abercrombie and Fitch, is this is a surfer, the surfer well, apparel. Abercrombie and Fitch, which is like the, the older, preppier, 
brand. And then there's Hollister, which is like the younger surfer. Uh, brand. I remember and there's, that. They're the same company. They're part of the same company. Is this still around? I, I remember this was a thing like in the end 90s, 2000s. Yeah. Like it they was really have, big. Still have stores in Germany. Okay. Do, yeah, there's still stores around. Was like, this is crazy? Was this this brand which had like, like, sur uh, like, um, topless Naked. surfer dudes yeah. in in the stores and stuff like that? They were called Oh Green wow, Burgers. Green, <laughs> and they we recruited them solely off of the way that they looked. Yeah, like, we were like, <laughs> "You're good looking. Do you want to come stand in front of our store and take pictures with people and say hi?" <laughs> Um, yeah, no, I stopped working for that company due to my morals because I couldn't morally like work for that company anymore, which can be a whole other story. But, um, yeah, I worked for them and I, we started to go international when I worked for them in California, they had opened the first store in London and like all this stuff. Mm -hmm. So I said, I wanted to go do that. So I had to work towards being able to interview and that kind of stuff within the company. And I got selected to go to Germany and open international stores. So I had like graduated college in like 2010. So by 2011 in January, I moved to Germany. <laughs> so like I lived at home until I graduated college. I lived away from my home in another city, which was like, an hour away and six months later I moved to Germany <laughs> like just straight up and so I started opening one store there which was in Dusseldorf and then Dusseldorf okay yeah Dusseldorf. it was actually Noyce so yeah, Noyce okay. is right next to Dusseldorf yeah. I was opening the Hollister and there is also an Abercrombie that's in Dusseldorf so anyways, I was there for almost a year and then I got news from my district manager. They were like, listen, there's this store in Frankfurt and it's doing really bad and we need you to go in and make it better. <laughs> Basically, they were like, everything about it is struggling. So we need you to go in and revamp it. So I was like, OK, I guess I'm moving to Frankfurt. And as I was moving to Frankfurt, <laughs> this gal that worked for the company was moving from Frankfurt to Dusseldorf. So she had already spent time in Frankfurt and she was like, you know what? I tried to recruit this guy. And when we were talking, he was telling me he was doing all this CrossFit thing that you were doing that you told me about, because I wasn't doing CrossFit when I was in noise in Dusseldorf, but I had always talked about it because that's what I had done before I moved to Germany. And so okay, so you, so you have done it in America before? Yeah, yeah. I started in college. Oh, wow. So probably like 2008, maybe, 2009. Um, and was this, was this hard, like, going to Germany? Did you have any experience with the language or? So that's like a whole other piece. I literally did not even know how to say... <laughs> <laughs> good day <laughs> you know like yeah I didn't know how to count to 10 like I knew nothing about the language but what they did was the first month they sent me and other expats that were staying in Germany opening stores they sent us to Berlin they paid us our salary <clears throat> and we went to German school full-time so 40 hours a week and so we basically got paid to go to school to learn the language for only a month though. So by the time I was done after a month, I knew I could say sprechen Sie English. <laughs> like <laughs> that was basically all I could say. Like, like a month learning German is not enough. Not, no, not no. closely like and German language. Eight hours a day. After four hours, your brain is like shut off. You're like, yeah, there is yeah. no possible way I am absorbing anything right now. So it was, yeah, it was very interesting. <laughs> that piece. Um, yeah. So anyways, we, I was moving, I moved to Frankfurt and she was like, there's this guy that does this CrossFit thing that you are, you're always talking about and you should connect with him because then you guys can be friends. 
And I was like, this is perfect. Like I need And a you friend. can recruit him. <laughs> you and you can recruit him. Yeah, no, I think Phil for like the first part of our relationship, he still had the recruiting card <laughs> <laughs> that our friend Anna at the time had given him. Um, no, he yeah, I, I connected with him on Facebook and I was like, I need a friend. I didn't tell him that. I thought to myself, cool, I need a friend. He's super cute and he does CrossFit. So this might be something that works out. So when I moved to Frankfurt, the first day I arrived, we had planned for him to come pick me up and take me to Bad Philbel, where the old CrossFit on mine was. But Philbel, okay. How 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 many miles is that from Frankfurt? It's like right outside of Frankfurt. It's probably like okay. six train stops from the main. Okay, train stop. like a suburb of Frankfurt. It's like northeast of Frankfurt. Okay. Um. So that's where Phil had originally started with um, the other owner, Steve, at the time. And so <clears throat> was that the first? Was that the first time you guys met in person or did That's you? The first time we met in person. So we had only <laughs> exchanged a few messages back and forth yeah. on Facebook. And then he was picking me up. So he picked me up and I'm in the car with him. And he is just talking and talking and talking and talking and talking and talking and talking. And talking and talking and blah, 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 blah. Like would not even barely breathe. Like could not <laughs> leave a silent even second of silence in the car and i was think sitting there thinking to myself like is this how he really is like, this is a lot of talking like i was just like oh very overwhelmed and i normally am a pretty chatty gal <laughs> um so yeah anyways we went to the crossfit box we did a workout and he took me back home and then we kind of started a little friendship but only for like a month and a half And then by January, <clears throat> a month and a half or two months later, we started dating. So, and then really that January when I moved in, so I moved into his house like two months after we met. Wow. And like, I looked That's at him fast. and I was like, it was super fast, but I looked at him and I was like, we're going to get married. You are my person. Like I knew at that point we are going to be together for the rest of our lives. And I never worried about him proposing. I never worried about anything like that because I was just so content and I knew that we were going to be together. And here we are. Meant to be, two, meant to be. And how, did, and how did you end up in Wiesbaden then? So, oh my gosh. So Stephen Glover, who was the owner and founder of Wiesbaden, we met somehow at some CrossFit event of some something. And then we realized how close Wiesbaden was close, you know, it wasn't so far, but it was close for CrossFit, like to have somebody else that's very, um, from the roots. because Steven had done CrossFit as long as I had from the United States. Um, for us, it was so worth going there and coaching because he had a good amount of experience. He could help us. And we kind of like built our relationship through that, like us going and coaching with him and whatnot. And we still talk to this day where he's, he lives in the United States now, but um, he's a good dude. He's a good dude. He is such a good dude. He was at our wedding in California. Um, yeah, he's, I call him my brother. He's the bomb. Yeah. He's a um, good dude. And I, I remember like back in that days, it's, it's like you said, you, couldn't find that many boxes in Germany at that point mm -hmm. and it was totally worth it like traveling a little bit yeah because there was literally nothing like I always tell this story even in 2014 or 15 when I moved to Bielefeld there was no box in Bielefeld yeah. the closest box was like Münster which is like one and a half hour by train from oh, me wow. and in Bielefeld there was nothing there was one guy who did like <clears throat> outdoor workouts with kettlebells in the in the park but that's it wow and I, and i always tell this story when i i bought one barbell from crossfit fra from you guys oh yeah and, yeah and took it 
but with the train to Bielefeld, like three hours in the in the in the regio train oh, with the barbell next to me. Seriously. <laughs> Because there was no box, there was no box. I, I trained for like two years in the in the park next to my apartment. I remember, I remember seeing you yeah. post all that stuff. You're doing pull ups on those outdoor rigs and like yeah. So it was totally worth it, like traveling half an hour to Bad Vilbel or Wiesbaden oh, even. Oh yeah, I guess. yeah. Especially because yeah. like at that time, Phil was already starting to translate for this the le the level ones. Yeah. And he knew that he wanted to try to be on staff. And so that going there allowed him to get more coaching experience because at, well, at Bed Philbel, it was so small and there wasn't enough space people to like take through the, the nine foundational movements and stuff that you get um, scored on basically to intern. Um, And so there he could get even more experience. Um, and that really like skyrocketed his coaching to get him on staff. So it was yeah. well worth it. And we made so many friends. Like, do you remember Carlos? Of course. of course, I had him on the show. <laughs> oh, you did? Yeah. Oh my gosh. I have to go back and watch. Because he, now he's in Korea. Yeah, I know South and Korea. He's on yeah. staff now too, which is so funny. Oh, cool. Yeah. No, I had him on the show um, after his um, semifinals in oh, okay. 2000. And I think it was, I don't know if it's 19 or 20. He went to the Grand Games and like finished in the bottom of the pack. And it was like a turning point in his thought process. Uh-huh. This dude is so, he is so fit and strong. Holy cow. Yeah. I remember back in the day, he was like clean and jerking. I don't even know how many hundreds of kilos. I was just like, you have no more space on the bar. You have literally no more space for weights on the bar. Was yeah, like he's crazy. To, he's crazy. To see that in the beginning, like, you know, like you've never seen someone lift that much weight in person. And then you do, and you're just yeah. like, My God, this is insane. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. I um when I talked to him, I, I um told a story when I when I did the foundations with you and um then my first workout at CrossFit Wiesbaden, he was also in the class and it was something like a hundred burpees and a hundred wall balls or something like that, or 50, I don't know. And I remember him totally destroying the workout, like in my mind, I had no idea how good he was or how good I was or whatever. So I tried yeah, to hang with him no in the, at, at the burpees and then totally died at the wall. Was like, <laughs> like that was a really, really bad idea. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this guy's, so, yeah, I'm going to try, try to hang with him. <laughs> yeah, this guy's big. There's no way he could like be fit, you know, like he's jacked. He's one of those like bodybuilder yeah strength guys but no he had an engine too you're like what the yeah. so crazy. crazy crazy to the state crazy yeah and so but but you end up at uh, level one or two staff two didn't you yeah well last weekend i was working at level two um we're both now phil and i are both doing the level twos as well so we do both one the level ones and the level twos is that <laughs> is that the the most amazing group of like human beings the staff i mean that's a big statement <laughs> it's a very big but i always statement. like i i follow the um, the ex media director of the crossfit games savan matosian and oh, he yes. always talks he always talks about the level one like like it's amazing like you have to go there even if you don't want to coach or whatever just go there experience this for one weekend and it's It's gonna be amazing. Like, like I have this yeah. vision in my mind that all these people are like crazy cool. I mean, I I have enjoyed being around every single person that I've worked with on staff. Like they they are unique in the sense that they have the same obsession and love for CrossFit and meeting people and helping people and 
we're just on the same level when it comes to that. And I think that what, that's what makes them so enjoyable to be around um, is just that service piece of like really there 100% of the time, not logging off, going on their phone, like there until the last person leaves. And that is cool. It's cool to be around. It's, it's fun to build relationships with people like that because you can just throw ideas back and forth and you're just, you get each other, you know? And like the level one and level two environment is so cool because the people that are there are so excited about CrossFit, just as excited as we are. And I mean, we've been doing CrossFit for a really long time. So everyone that's there is even newer with their love for CrossFit. And so the combination yep. of, of that, that environment is just like breeds amazingness, <laughs> like <laughs> for real. Like yep. I, I think Phil and I have been on staff for, you know, eight years, six to eight years. And it's like, I still, every weekend, I'm like, this is the coolest fucking job in the world. Like, I love this job. I, I, this weekend, cause I hadn't worked for like a year and a half because I taken a baby break. Yeah. And I was like, I can't believe this is my job. Like this is, I'm getting paid to do this. Like it's, it's just, it's special. It's, it's a special environment. And what, what did you send me? Are you doing your level one or level two? Yeah. At the end of February, I'm going to do the level one in Berlin. And you will then see <laughs> what I mean. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about it. Yeah. Especially because you've been doing CrossFit for a good amount of time now too. Yeah. And just like being able to go and get a refresher, you know, of like what nutrition is, what CrossFit is, what fitness is, like why we do this amazing fitness program. Like, and it, it is packaged in these beautiful little lectures with people that are lecturing that are really interesting to listen to and because they have been practicing their craft of lecturing and getting information out and then you do like these groups of you're in a group with five other people and you're learning how to do the air squat front squat and overhead squat and you're like I thought I was a pretty good mover and I'm getting my ass handed to me um because the coaches have been doing these groups for a decade you know and, um, it's, 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 I would say for someone that's done cross it for a good amount of time, it's revitalizing It reignites the flame of like how cool and amazing this thing that we do called CrossFit, you know, it's, it's, it's so cool. I'm so excited that you're going to do it. <laughs> I'm excited too. Yeah. And you say you've done it for almost eight years now. <sighs> Let's see here. I think 2014 is when I got on staff. Yeah. Um, and then I've been doing CrossFit since before I moved to Germany. So that was probably 2009 is when I started doing CrossFit. So. And the staff is like, is it, um, is it only Germany or Europe or did so you have any traveling with it? Back in the day when we first got on, we were traveling around the world. So oh, wow. we were in South Africa, we were in Asia, we were in um, the Middle East, um, Kuwait. I worked a seminar in Kuwait on, an, on a base, Air Force base. Wow. Like <laughs> all of the countries. We went um, I did one in Iceland. Um, like we got to travel all over. And when we were both on staff and we were together, it benefited CrossFit to have us both work the seminar because then we would stay in the same room. It oh, would have to pay for another room. Yep. So it was, <laughs> of, it was often that him, Phil and I got to go to Korea together. Or wow, Japan. that's an amazing gig. It was the time of our lives and it was during the time that we owned the box so it was like yeah. super gnarly because monday through friday we were running the box and then you know thursday we would have to leave if we were going to asia and then we would come back on monday and then we would work you know like so yeah. you were just like 
constantly living in a hazy bubble. You're like, where am I? What time zone am I in? Yeah. Yeah. And people yeah. don't realize, like you have to realize people, CrossFit Fra, it, it wasn't a small box. It was like two stories, huge, huge space. Like it was yeah. crazy. It, it was, was wasn't it wasn't it the biggest in Germany or even Europe? Honestly, I don't think it was that. It was big. big. It, there were other boxes that were bigger, I think, but um, overall, I mean, there was a lot of people. We had like over 200 plus members. Yeah. Uh, we had 10 coaches and like Phil and I were developing the coaches. Then we had additional classes like yoga classes, other classes that weren't just CrossFit. We had our clothing line, which nostalgia right um <laughs> that was like 25 percent of our revenue so it was like we w had to forecast what we were going to do the next season yep. like i mean it was not just like hey we're going to do a few classes it was like classes running simultaneously in the morning and at night like it was <laughs> it was intense and you even did like level ones at the place at in the box didn't oh, you yeah. That was like yeah. the best case scenario is that we yeah. got to do the level one at the box. We could have the level one downstairs. We could have classes upstairs. So we still had classes running, but we had the level one and we were there. Yeah. Um, so that was, it was so And cool. seriously, I don't know. I think you both are like workaholics. I think seriously, I can't even tell you how many people in the boxes I've been to the last years, whenever I wear my CrossFit Fra shirt for, for a workout, seriously, I can't tell you how many people like talking to me, oh, CrossFit Fra, amazing, I did my level one there, or even like the box owners, yeah, yeah, I know them, I did my level one with them, they're amazing people. So oh, cool. seriously, yeah. a lot of people. I'm so happy that CrossFit Fra lives on, even though we've been closed for like, yeah however many years four or five years now um yep. yeah it says something about our work ethic and the impact that we made at least on the community which for us is super important but you know we we had a place that people love that they just wanted to go in and hang out and yeah we did some fitness but most of the time we just hung around and drank a beer and barbecued on the side of the <laughs> the building and <laughs> I think that's what people remember the most. It's just, it was just a cool place to hang out. It was, we yeah, it, it was special. It was a cool community, really. Cool. And I still to this day, like, like even Wiesbaden and, and CrossFit Fire, I still meet so many people from back in that day, like Carlos, you guys, Anka. Yeah. Do you remember Michael? It's Brown? crazy. Yeah. He's also on staff now. Oh, really? Yeah, in the wow. state. Yeah. So cool. Yeah, no, it's, <laughs> it's wild. It was an amazing time. I I was just looking back through photos and stuff, and I was just like, dang, that was such a cool time. So cool. But all good things must come to an end. Yeah. Change is always good. I always say this to, to anyone. Change is Both always good. good. There's always something better on the horizon when you uh -huh. when you when you think so, oh this is the end. Nah. <laughs> yeah. I mean we were devastated at the time, but now looking back, it was good that we moved because then our stress levels came down and then we could, you know, have yep. a baby and all these things that were also parts of our life that we wanted to have. So but it's so nice to reminisce. <laughs> Do you think your kid's going to be super, super humans, super fit humans? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, Joey is like an energizer bunny. She's like, we'll go out on the trampoline out on the yard in the yard and she just will jump on it for like 30 minutes. You're just like, how are you still alive? Like she just won't stop. <laughs> so it'll be really fun to see because she goes down there when we're training sometimes when we're mm. not doing something like with a barbell when it's more like body weight 
workout yeah. that we're doing. Um, and she loves it. Like she's hanging on the rings and like jumping around and just having fun down there. So hopefully we influence her in a positive way to where she like wants to be like mom and dad. Yeah, for um, sure. Well, I, I would so. never, I would never push it on her, but if she is yep. interested in doing it, then, oh my gosh, it would make my heart sing for sure. Um, but yeah, no, I think we're an active family. So regardless, I think they're going to be, they're going to be strong little nuggets for sure. <laughs> for sure. I guess so. It's crazy. Like seeing at the, at the games level, like seeing the next generation now, mm -hmm. like this is, I think the, these years are the first years where you, where you really see like a generation of people who grow up with the sport. Like yeah. our generation, when it started, most of the people are already like have been in their 20s or something like that yeah. or even older. But now you see a generation who grow up with this shit. Yeah. And it's, yeah. it's like mind blowing. Yeah. To see like 16 year olds like demolishing a field of veteran athletes. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Well, so, and like they move so well too. You're just yeah. like, this is offensively amazing. Yeah. Who's the best mover you, you've seen on the staff? Like on the seminar staff? Ooh, on the seminar staff? Ooh, that is a great question. I would say like over all the staff that I have worked with, Probably um, a gal, her name is Jenny Orr. She lives in, in Florida. She moved really, really well. Just effortless, beautiful spot. <laughs> yeah, she takes the cake for sure. Jenny Orr, I have to check her out. Jenny, yeah, Jenny Orr. She is, she is a chick. See, it, she is so cool. <laughs> I can't remember, what are, we went and worked on a base somewhere some base where we had to like sleep in the the bunks that the the people that are on the base sleep in and like it was such an experience where was that i think that was the one in kuwait that i was telling you about and it was just like blazing hot there and you were just indoors all day because it's just so hot outside because it's a desert and it was like kind of rug rugged you kind of wasn't like we're gonna stay in a nice hotel it's like you're sleeping in these bunk beds and you're gonna take a shower in these open showers and it was, it was so fun oh and we did a um, so she's also like a dancer and so we there was a zumba class i think it was a zumba class that the gym was offering and it was like at five or six i can't remember what time it was and so we all joined The, the Zumba class. <laughs> Here it is, guys. Oh Between gosh, Iraq yeah. and Iran, I was like, session, where is Kuwait? Wow. I, I can't remember the, it was Camp Af Persian Af Gulf. Af Af like, this is Germany. <sighs> Way over there, yeah. Crazy far. I can't remember <laughs> the, um, the actual base name, but. Anyways, there was like a Zumba class there and we all took the Zumba class and Jenny was just like crushing it because she's so good at <laughs> dancing. And then there's me, the white girl in the corner that looks like a complete fool. Like <laughs> everyone else like knows how to move their hips. And I'm just like, you're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome. You can look at me and laugh. That's okay. That's all right. Oh my gosh. So many fun experiences. Wow, that's crazy. Kuwait. Kuwait. So what, yeah. what does the future hold for you? You started a YouTube show. I what did. is it about? What is it about? Uh, Tell me about it. So I had originally, well, I did not have the idea to have a YouTube channel. One of my best friends, Christina, you know her, Christina and Renee from The Box. Yeah. So she, they were over visiting and she was like, you know what? You need to start a YouTube channel. And I was like, Christina, what are you talking about? This sounds ridiculous. She was like, no, really. I think you have X, Y, and Z. You should do this and that. And I was, then I started thinking about it. And I was like, you know what? 
I need to be able to connect to my family first and foremost, because I live so far away. There's a lot of people in my hometown that I just don't get to connect with anymore um, or not as often. And so I thought to myself, okay, this would be a really cool way to involve my family and friends that are far away in my life in general. Um, And then I started thinking, okay, well, there are a lot of things that I have struggled with. (laughs) Like whether it be being a mom or starting training again, or like just random things that I have caught myself multiple times talking to other moms about and have been able to give them advice because I had experienced X, Y, and Z. And so then I thought, okay, well, maybe this could be a cool place where people could go, moms, caretakers, whoever. Um, And you know, get helpful tips to do how to, I don't know, entertain your toddler for the next hour. (laughs) Easy DIY tips and ways that you can entertain your toddler on a budget, like just little tiny things like that. Cause like, for example, Joey, she was just demanded attention constantly. So I was always thinking of like, sticking things on the wall when she could barely sit up so that she was like trying to grab things, just like weird stuff to keep her entertained. So that side, then like hopeful, like motivation and hopefully maybe being inspiring to other women that are trying to train again. Cause honestly, it's so hard to get training again. Like it's ridiculous. And so, um, now it's kind of turned into, I think I would like to help other people in certain situations, whether it be with, with, you know, struggling with training and, or with parenthood and stuff like that. And then also then involving my family and friends. That's why I did that last, uh, a day in the life, which <laughs> I only got to like 10 30 in the morning. I was like, <laughs> I literally need to do this in three parts because there is just so much footage that I have to go through. Just do 24 hours. <laughs> Seriously, honestly, I loaded 100%. <laughs> I loaded just up to 10:30 what I had recorded and it was like an hour and 45 minutes of film. I was like, uh, I don't think people want to watch an hour and 45 minutes of <laughs> sitting on the ground playing with my children, you know? Um, (laughs) yeah, like, so that's why I I, like trickle those like day in the life things for like my family and friends. And then I'll have like how you can work out with your baby because your baby won't let you put your baby down because they're like teething or whatever it is. So it's kind of a, a combination of both. And then we'll see where that evolves to. Yeah. And it's cool. And I think I watched the day in a life and you know what I really like about it. It's real. You know, it's not some, some crazy YouTube um, with all the gimmicks and stuff and like really like cheesy. It's, it's real. And that's what people seek out. Yeah. And I think. Cool. No, I, I like that. About it. That's, that's what I want to portray. I don't want it to be. Well, and that's what I had talked about in my about me. Like I had originally tried to like make my hair perfect. And I was like trying to stage yeah. the house and like, it took me hours just to do that. And then I was like, <laughs> shit, the baby's up. <laughs> like now I can't even record it anyways. And when I was trying to record it, it was just so, it was so fake. Like I was watching myself back and I was like, this is not you girl. Like you need to change this up. This looks so fabricated and anybody that knew me would be like this is super late <laughs> so yeah no that's good i'm glad it it is it is real well it is real so i'm glad it yeah. seems real. no it's, it's perfect you have to do it like this so that's that's the real deal yeah that makes me happy <laughs> so jamie thank you for your time you're I welcome we I think if you, if you, I watched a day in her life and I was like, oh, I should be um, thankful that she's giving me time away from that. So if you don't have 
you don't have that much free time and you're giving it to me. So really, thank you. Thank you for that. Well, you're worth it. You're a good friend of ours. So we'll always make time for you. And I really, we have to meet in person again, like yeah, yeah. this year. We need to do, we need to meet in person. And I feel like we need to bring back and do like a photo shoot with the family to like bring it oh, full circle. Be cool. Because yes. when I, I remember when you were like taking photos of the wedding and you were so involved in like a lot of the photography pieces of the business and stuff. And I was like always wanting you to like be the one that like captured every stage of our life. But of course, then we like moved away from each other and like the logistics, the logistics just doesn't work with a newborn, you know? Um, but I would like to bring it full circle and do something like that because awesome. Yeah. Of course, I still love the uh, photos I did at far from above. We yes. do the the muscle ups and the overhead squats from above. Still amazing mm -hmm. to this They're day. So cool. Love it. I love them. And speaking of photos, <laughs> I was actually just thinking of you because the that USB stick that you gave me for the wedding, mm -hmm. I can't find it. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> I am really? like, I have been looking. For the last month because I was so stoked about this photo that you had took of me in that chair at the um mm, yep yeah, yep yeah. anyways I was like I need to find the original of that because I I still have nothing on the walls basically in this house that we moved into and um I wanted to get some of those original wedding photos because I love them so much um and I can't find it uh we're gonna fix this yeah, no worries. I, I still I still have it on my on my um, hard drive. I can send you a new okay. one. Okay, I figured. Um, no worries. Okay. Oh, thank God. <laughs> so I'm gonna stop recording.